All right, man, Tootsie Talk. Eight o'clock show. Eight o'clock show, everybody, everybody. Come on in, everybody, if I can get this thing to work. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. Eight o'clock show. I know I got the same clothes on, but I pre record these. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't no dirty man. I'm nice and pretty clean. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about how Kendrick Lamar album just changed everything in hip hop as we know it. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into that. Before I get into that, Legendary Spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, 8 a.m. show. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription. You don't have to, you don't have to just subscribe. I'm, I work, baby. I work, baby. Let me work for your subscription. All the beautiful, single, sexy ladies. Now, if you want to subscribe, because there are some beautiful, single, sexy ladies over here. They always throw in one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, Cash App is in the description. You don't have to leave a donation. As long as you hear it, it's all good. Hit the like button, all that, share, 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 and all that good stuff. They called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000. You know what I'm saying? And I'm the king of the north. Let me know where you from. You know what I'm saying? And it's all good. So let's get to it, man. We're going to get to this. And we'll be back to discuss. All right, man. So look, this comes courtesy of Lewesta. You know, he always had a great videos <laughs> so we're gonna get into it man let's go it was just an ordinary friday hip-hop fans were peeping new releases from artists like kenny mason and boldy james but it seemed like a relatively low-key week when it came to new music the only other real thing of note that was going down was j cole adding his legendary mixtapes to streaming services after years of longing from his fans until suddenly a single post that came out of nowhere changed everything this year, Kendrick Lamar's X account has been on an unparalleled run where everything that's appeared on it has been of major cultural significance. Now, I will say this. Kendrick Lamar, man, he utilizes the system, I think, the best I've ever seen an artist ever do it. I, know, I don't understand if y'all understand what he has done, but he has definitely utilized the system like no one has ever done before. It's uncanny how he has done this. I'm, and you know the crazy thing is, everybody's always talking about how him and Drake battle was close. I take this part into consideration because Drake has much more followers than him. And Drake posts and Drake does all this. But Kendrick Lamar beat Drake without even using social media like that. He just did it strategically with the songs. That's the crazy. That's the crazy part. So you got to understand the strategy that this man is using. Let's keep it going. And after using it to debut his famed diss tracks, ranging from Euphoria to Not Like Us, and announcing his Super Bowl performance on the same account, he once again brought hip hop to a standstill with the release of a surprise new album titled GNX. But what does the album represent? And does its content tell us whether K Dot is returning to peacetime or ramping up for another war with the people that he's shaded on the project? It's your boy Luesta, and let's break down Kendrick's new album, GNX. For starters, let's talk about the timing of the project. Just was crowned rapper of the year by Apple Music, people wondered how this was possible without him releasing a full-length album. So just like he once silenced retirement rumors sparked by a Twitter user by kicking off the rollout for Mr. Morale, he's shut down his critics once again, this time by dropping an entirely new project. And when I say surprise, I mean it. According to Industry Insider, This is crazy because I don't understand how people were saying, how is he rapper of the year? <laughs> How is he rapper of the year? If you have to ask that question, then I already know that you're a Drake fan. You're a Drake fan. If, how is he the rapper of the year? How is Kendrick the rapper of the year? I, I, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Ryan Zizuk, even his label found out on Friday morning. Now, the record has made such an immediate splash that many believe it will dethrone the Wicked soundtrack from claiming the top spot. Named after the 1987 Buick Grand National Regal GNX, which came out the year he was born, this album could have easily just been a victory lap for K-Dot after a wild 2024. But instead, he decided that he wasn't taking his foot off of anyone's neck. 
In fact, he took plenty of shots at both familiar enemies and even some new foes. So let's decode the Now, as far as the car goes, that's a <laughs> we all know that those cars, when you see that car, that's a Cali car. You know what I'm saying? We all know a lot of Cali. I ain't going to say. I'm just going to say, y'all know, y'all know that car. You know what I'm saying? We all know that car. That's all I'm going to say. Project. Although it's essentially the intro to the album, the song Whacked Out Murals proved that Kendrick was ready to go to war from the outset. And after witnessing it happen from the shadows, he finally decided to speak out about Lil Wayne's grumbling about the Super Bowl. On the track, he references his Wayne fandom, as well as the response he received from Tunchi about his upcoming halftime show performance in New Orleans. Used to bump the car to three, I held my rolly chain proud irony. I think my hard work let Lil Wayne down. This is a direct reference to everything that's gone down since it was. And I don't understand how a lot of y'all took that as a diss. He basically saying like. He 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 looked up to Wayne and look what happened. Like he did all this, and then out of nowhere, Lil Wayne just threw shade on him. And he said all that hard work he did because of Lil Wayne, and look what happened. He think he let him down. Like maybe all this hard work wasn't worth it because you complaining about not getting a, a look at the Super Bowl. Revealed that K Dot was scheduled to perform over the hometown hero Lil Wayne. So, like I said, it broke me, and I'm just trying to put me back together. But my God, have you all helped me? Thanks to all my peers, my friends, my family, and my homies on a sports television, everybody repping me. I really appreciate that. I really do. I feel like I let all of y'all down by not getting that opportunity. But I'm working on me, and I'm working. And it's crazy how. Kendrick, Kendrick is a slick dude. He's a slick dude. He used Lil Wayne words against him because Lil Wayne was saying how he felt he let everybody down. And Kendrick was saying, <laughs> I think my hard work let you down. <laughs> Yo, Kendrick is a slick dude, man. Oh, my God. He's so slick, bro. He's so slick. Thank you. As opposed to doing that work on himself that he alluded to, Wheezy has continued to grow increasingly bitter over not receiving this opportunity and almost blaming KDOT for it. Even as he was handed the key to the city, he controversially claimed that he had been robbed at Wheeziana Fest. That moment I said to myself, I want to be on stage for the Super Bowl one day in front of my mom. And I worked my ass off to get that position and it was ripped away from me. But this fucking moment right here, they can't take that, man. They can't take that from me. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for yourself for being amazing. As if that wasn't enough to try Kung Fu Kenny's patience, Wayne decided to rock his OVO owl pendant in support of Drake while referencing Not Like Us at one of his shows. After all this victim mentality from Wheezy and refusing to be happy for a kid who was a disciple of his, K it's crazy how he would do that on stage, saying they not like us to that to that uh, uh memo beat was it a uh, motto I think it's the motto, hey day hey day mm -hmm. it's crazy for him to do that and a lot of I guess even me even I overlooked that <clears throat> I should have I should have caught that I should have caught that too. I know I did a video for it, but I should have caught that. That was that was some shade too. That was some shade too. And you basically saying like they not like us over the beat that you and Drake rap to. Oh my God. I just hope, Lil Wayne, I hope you do not battle Kendrick, bro. Cause I'm telling you now, this is gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. I finally had enough. <laughs> On top of those bars, let's not act like the cover art might not be a little elusive illusion towards the Carter II, right down to the black and white photo. Clearly, the whole situation deeply bothered Kendrick. After all, this is one of his heroes who have been gracious towards him when he's shown nothing but love. That moment in the studio with Wayne, me and J-Rock in the studio with Wayne, I never told Wayne this. That changed my perspective about work ethic. Knocked out about 12 verses, and this is feature Wayne at the moment. 
And these not no motherfucking fly-by-night verses. This is set right there and thought out right in front of your face and smashing them. And he's excited about it. And he's loving music. And he loves what he's doing. That gave me a whole nother appreciation. And we took that same intensity and that work ethic and we applied it moving forward from having that feature for all my life. Let's not forget that Kendrick is such an avid supporter of Wayne's that he even went out of his way to try and stop him from throwing his career away when he fell on hard times. Nigga talking about re retiring and shit, nigga. Fuck that, nigga. I'm in the motherfucking studio, nigga, doing motherfucking features, nigga. Nigga, I seen you, nigga, 2007, nigga, 2008. Nigga, I seen you knock out motherfucking. 10 motherfucking features in a row, nigga, back to back, nigga. Now, it turns out that Wayne is ready to go to war with Kendrick too over his recent bars on Whacked Out Murals. In a tweet posted at 1 a.m. on Saturday, Wheezy said, Man, what the fuck did I do? I just be chillin' and they still come from my head. Let's not take kindness for weakness. Let this giant sleep. I beg you all. No one really wants destruction, not even me, but I shall destroy if disturbed. And once again, the community had begun to call him out for... Here's the thing, right? And this is what makes me laugh about Lil Wayne. Nobody, nobody called you out. What are you talking about? Who said anything to you? Nobody said anything about you or to you. What, what other rapper has said anything about Lil Wayne? Nobody has said anything. What are you talking about? acting oblivious and claimed that he would get smoked by Kendrick if he had a rap battle with him. As upset as he was about Weezy's behavior, Kendrick soon revealed that he wasn't the only person that switched up. And this time, the culprit was a lot closer to home than New Orleans. In that same verse, Kendrick takes some time to express his hurt at Snoop Dogg for sharing Drake's tailor-made freestyle, a track which sampled not only an AI version of D.O.G.'s voice, but Kendrick's hero, Tupac's as well. You're supposed to be the boogeyman, go do what you do, unless this is a moment that you tell us it's not really you. Now, Kendrick has made it known how shocked he was. Snoop posted tailor-made, I prayed it was the edibles, I couldn't believe it, it was only right for me to let it go. And to clarify, K.Dot isn't paranoid, it really happened. For uh, this must feel like a far cry from the days where he literally handed the torch. That definitely did happen. And I and 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 we all know that, that Kendrick isn't. I just think that Kendrick is really out here saying to himself, I'm just gonna hold everybody's feet to the fire because truth be told, a lot of y'all are fake. And a lot of y'all need to be called to the carpet. I'm telling you, man. That's what this is. That's what this is exactly what this is the west coast to him in 2015. at that moment a young kada shed tears on stage for how happy he was to receive it i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna mean this nigga you got the torch nigga you better run with it However, in recent times, Snoop has taken a neutral stance that Kendrick might perceive as disloyalty. For instance, when asked about Kendrick headlining the Super Bowl, Snoop refused to firmly endorse him, opting for a non-committal response. If you can't stop sucking on nickel team response. Well, I don't really have no opinion, but what I do want to say is that just remember what the NFL was 15 years ago when it comes to hip hop. How many hip hop artists was able to grace that stage 15 years ago? So I understand both sides of the coin and I understand how people feel. I have no answer, no opinion because I had the opportunity to get up there via Dr. Dre. I didn't do any Snoop Dogg songs. I was up there helping Dr. Dre and it became a great moment for all of us. So at the same time, Lil Wayne is the GOAT of New Orleans rap. Remember, I was at No Limit records for three years and i watched his whole yes. career come to life and then watch them become the biggest i watched him get bigger than me you feel what i'm saying and i was gigantic at the time and i love seeing his growth and me and wayne is family to this day me and kendrick is family to this day and me and jay-z and me, me and roger godell so i don't know who is a decision maker all i know is that i'll be home watching the super bowl and when the halftime show come on i'll be watching that as well but it seems like snoop might have i mean it's, I mean, I can't really feel no type of way about that. I mean, if that's, what, that's how he feels. I do feel what Kendrick is saying, though. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I definitely think Kendrick feels like, like, this guy, Drake, he drew a line in the sand. And whoever, whoever um, is standing on the side of Kendrick, he basically is putting it out there that he don't mess with them. 
I think Kendrick took a different approach because I think Kendrick felt like a lot of West Coast dudes wouldn't do that. It would basically side. They would side with him. And some people ain't fully commit to it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what it is really been impaired when he shared that infamous story because when pressed he immediately backpedaled and let Kadon know that he's the ruler of the coast. Kadon knew album GNX, it was the edibles, West West King. Snoop's endorsement of Taylor Made wasn't the only way Kendrick clapped back at Drake's appropriation of West Coast legends. On the track Reincarnated, Kadon sampled Tupac's Made Brothers from Gang Related. No man separate what we create. It was done in a way where he seemed to be reiterating that he was the heir to Tupac's throne. I did past like progression last year when it me up, reincarnated on this earth for a hundred plus. Aside from commenting on Drake owning one of Pac's rings, this is one of the most explicit nods to Pac that he's made on Wax since he had a conversation with him on the conclusion of To Pimp a Butterfly on the track Mortal Man. But even after Drake seemingly bowed out of the beef, Kendrick made it clear that he wasn't done with Drizzy just yet. On Whacked Out Murals, Kendrick seemed to be hinting towards Drake's attempts to get dirt on Dot through financial means, only for his nearest and dearest in Compton to refuse to give anything up, even when the bag or cryptocurrency was waved in front of them. Niggas from my city couldn't entertain no boy, promising bank transactions and even Bitcoin. Plus, he seemed to let it be known that there would never be a ceasefire either, insisting that there will be no mediation that could get them on the same side ever again. I never piece it up, that shit don't sit well with me. Before I take a truce, I'll take them to hell with me. Staying with whacked out murals, even the- Man, I tell you. I tell you, man. He, 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 he talking. He talking because I think that that's the sentiment he has to have because Drake, did ne he never stopped. I, even though he said he was going to stop, he never stopped. And that's why he's saying, I can't, I can't be the one to look weak. I can't be the one to bend the knee. And then this guy, because you see what he does. According to academics, he squashed the beef with The weekend, and he went on the live stream and he dissed The weekend. So Kendrick's like, I'm not going to be that guy. I would never uh, uh, squash this with this, with you, dog. You know, <laughs> I guess y'all can forget about Lil Wayne coming out as a guest uh, <laughs> at the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 I guess that's not happening. <laughs> Oh, Punk's man. title is a reference to the feud between himself and Drizzy. It alludes to this portrait of Kendrick that was displayed at the restaurant Misa Boar in Compton being defaced by sour Drake fans. Today, they celebrated KDOT saluting them, writing on IG that, a few months ago, our Kendrick mural got hit. Of course, we were pissed and wanted to fix it, but it just kept getting worse. Flash forward to today and Kendrick drops a song about the situation. It doesn't necessarily make it okay, but it does feel good to have our hard work in the community immortalized in a song by one of the greatest to ever do it. Thank you at Kendrick Lamar for making the situation a little better today. But the to make the, the subtle Drake slander and retracing of their beef didn't stop there. On Squabble Up, he kept at it, claiming that he still has beef and even referencing the fact that he brought Adonis into it with these bars. Pipe down, young, these some whole other politics. With him and some in him, that's a lot of Don't hit him, he got kids with him, my apologies. Among the most overt displays of shade to Bro, oh my God, bro. That could be, that bar could be taken so many other ways though. It don't necessarily have to mean that he was talking about Adonis. It's so many other things he could have. It could be taken, you know. <laughs> Don't hit him. He's got kids with him. <laughs> but then again, if he is, if he is a PDF, he's definitely trying to hit him. You know, that's what he said. But yeah, man, this this is great. Drake that the project features is that Kendrick still made the hard part six as if Drake's diss track of the same name never even happened. But rather than focus on hate, Dot used it to specifically salute his TDE brothers, firmly ending any speculation that there was some tension between them. Not only did he salute Ab Soul and his pen, claiming that he used to study his style, Dot also reserved bars for his PG Lang partner Dave Free. My nigga Dave had a champagne Nacura. That nigga wore several hats, a producer, manager, director, and DJ. I watch him take some penitentiary chances to say the least. By doing this, he made it evident that all of Drake's attempts at tearing them apart, with rumors of Dave being the real father of his son, didn't put a dent in their bond. 
Later, he explained why Black Hippie never materialized quite how they hoped. My motivation was the yearning for independence. Poured everything I had left in the family business. Now it's about Kendrick. However, Kendrick decided to place the blame on himself and revealed why he decided to set up PG Lang in the first place. I jog my memory knowing Black Hippie didn't work because of me. Creatively, I moved on with new concepts and reach. Heading back towards the realm of beef, Kendrick has made it clear that he is no longer playing a cool when it comes to the competition. After saluting Nas for acknowledging his Super Bowl performance when other legends ignored out of spite. He then That's crazy how Nas was the only hip-hop artist that I know of, that I seen congratulate him on the Super Bowl. That's crazy to me. All is nobody else. Nobody else. That's crazy. I don't get it. Evoked the spirit on one mic on Man in the Garden. In the track, he let it be known that he wasn't even slightly phased by the prospect of further warfare. Alongside that, he seemed to salute himself for how he handled the Drake beef, claiming, down, don't you play with me and stay with me. I'm crashing out right now, no one's safe with me. Before then saying, I did it with integrity and still try hate on me. Just wait and see. More blood be spilling, it just painting me. Then it was back to straight up. He's basically saying, like, bro, I did this with integrity and y'all still hate on me. All right. Just wait until, I mean, wait until the blood spill. It's just paint to me because I'm just going to keep going and I ain't going to stop. It's crazy. Shade in Drake's direction on Hey Now, where he suggested that he eliminated him once and for all. You play God, you gon' get what you asked for. We got the same 24, what you mad for? I put a square on his back like I'm Jack Dorsey. As if this message wasn't clear enough, he really drove. Bro, that was fire. Oh my God, bro. He said, the last one I battled thought he was Magneto. You ask, you play God, you're going to get what you ask for. That's fire, bro. Come on. At home with the line, the black know I just strangled me a goat. Drake is angrily throwing threes on his basketball court right now after that one. But alongside all of the hate, there is plenty of room for love here too. On Dodger Blue, he salutes the city of Los Angeles. And even then, he lets it be known that he's not to be played with. And after years of speculation, he seems to be finally willing to admit that he's really as affiliated to the streets as people have speculated. Because on this track, he let it be known that he's not a studio gangster. Instead, he's someone who's really grown up around the threat of violence and street politics. Oh my kids, I suck you, nigga. In sh Wait, what the heck? You understood what I said? Yeah. But you're black. How can you understand Spanish? Well, I have one He has nothing to do with genetics, and most men can reverse it. Most men think that what makes his size be small. Kendrick just defeated Drake with nature. Who am I giving the out? Academics said he had to make amends for using the hyphy sound, despite not being from the Bay, or really putting on for local artists. He might need to give a feature. Who am I giving need to give a feature to? How many features he might need to give? Because also, let me ask you a question. The song that some people believe that Kendrick just defeated Drake with, Not Like Us, is a song that definitely uses a Bay Area sound. Kendrick is not from the Bay Area, but that is still part of LA culture, it's still part of the West Coast. But with that being said, you know how many people have used that sound that never popped? Does Kendrick owe them a feature? Yo, you just won your beef or you just came up on your beef using our sound. Let's use the same logic, people. Yo, bro, let, yo, what's up with a feature? You're, you're capitalizing off our sound. That's like just like what Sauce Walker said with the Jersey City, Jersey Club shit, right? But now that he's had Doty Six on Hey Now, AZ Shike on... I mean, 
That's a weird argument. It's like they all from L.A. And I think that, you know, you're saying, well, you want to battle off of our sound. I was like, bro, stop. Just stop. Y'all find y'all try to find any and everything to try to come, take shots at Kendrick. Any and everything, I tell you. Peekaboo, Wally the Sensei on Dodger Blue, Hit a J3, Peso, and Young Threat on this project. It's pretty clear that he's got his ear to the ground of what's occurring in Cali hip hop. Before you ask a personal question, yeah. you gotta retract what you said. About what? You said Dot was gonna give none of them niggas on stage no features. He put all the young homies on from the city on the album. Well, this is what I would say. I think I'll say something better. I think I think we encourage him to do that. I don't care why he did it though, but he did do it. So I'll give him credit for doing it. So and, and I thought that was a Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. It's like, yo, I'm telling you, you just can't just say what it is. Like everybody's gotta give these vague opinions. Like, hey, I'll, I'll say this. We was the ones that actually made him do it. Like Stop it, bro. Stop it. Great look. I thought it was a great look, even though we could have still named them on the songs because we got to do some Googling, but fans do that anyway. But I, I do think that was a good look. That was a good look, Amy. With GNX, we get an album from Dot that explores all sides of Like any and everything to just say something. I still could. I wish he would have just named them on a song. Like, stop, bro. Stop. Permitting his hate and anger to coexist with his desire for peace. In essence, it's a true Gemini's album encompassing everything that's inside. In fact, he seemed to hint at the concept behind it in an interview from just last month. I don't believe I'm an angry person, but I do believe in love and war, and I believe they both need to exist. And my awareness of that allows me to react to things, but not identify with them as who I am. Just allowing them to exist and allowing them to flow through me, that's what I believe. Whatever you think about the record itself, it's clear that it stopped the world in its tracks and once again proves that Kendrick is at the top of his game right now. Once again, these words relate to what he said as the Super Bowl announcement came to pass. Rap music is still the most impactful genre to date, Lamar said in a statement at the time. And I'll be there to remind the world why. They got the right one. On GNX, he can consider us reminded. And if DJ Head's recent tweet is anything to go by, this might only be just the beginning. It's your boy Luesta, and if you guys like this, yeah, make sure y'all go check Loista out. <laughs> All right, man. You know what it is. Yeah, man. That was a very good video, a very good breakdown. He always has good, great videos. Um, he went through the whole timeline of how this thing, how everything started and led up to this record. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, that's gonna be the name of the uh, the uh, the episode timeline of uh, how we got to this point with. Kendrick um in his album and where did all this come from? Yeah, so but uh hope y'all listen to the album and uh go back and listen to it again. And yeah, we're gonna see what happens um and all that good stuff. So I'm out of here, man. Y'all have yourself a good good morning. Twelve o'clock show coming up. You know what it is, man. See y'all peace. Bye.